G'day all, welcome to another video. Uh, this is going to be the maiden of my ZOHD Drift that I've just built. Many of you would have seen the video previously. This one is running a Speedy B F405 Wing Mini. Tight squeeze, um, if you want to check out that, that's in the previous video. It's also running the Happy Model ES900 RX receiver, running Express LRS, running the latest version at the moment, which I believe is 3.3. But the main addition from the last video to this video is the introduction of the HD camera here. It's a Walk Snail Avatar HD Mini 1S camera. It shoots 1080p at 60 frames per second or 720p at 120 frames per second. So it does only have 8GB of storage, which was a bit of a shame. Now to get the Walk Snail unit running, uh, because this is only set up to run uh, 5 volts, I believe. It's a bit confusing the way it's written. Um, because it can be misinterpreted, I think, to run thir up to 13 volts. But I've played it safe regardless and put a BEC in here uh, to limit that so it's only running 5 volts. So if anyone's, if anyone out there's got one of these in one of their craft and are running more than the 5 volts, could you let me know? Just, I'd like, I'm curious to know whether they can handle more or not. I'd, as far as I'm aware, they don't. So um, that's why I played it safe and I put the BEC in and just running it on 5 volts only. I've also added some weight on the back to help with the CG so I've had to add an additional 15 grams to the tail to help with the balance. So the overall weight of this craft I felt was it's, it's a bit on the heavy side, it's a bit overweight. You can see it's 371 grams with its 2S LiPo pack on it. So that's it. it is over the, the maximum weight it's recommended, but now you'll see how it flies in a moment. I've changed the aerial orientation. It looks a bit ugly like that, but I did have a failsafe the other way it was mounted uh, horizontally, which may have resulted in a failsafe. So I thought I'm just gonna mount it this direction for my next flight and just to see if it happens again. And if it isn't any change, I'll, I'll probably put it back the way I was. We'll go through the flight in a minute and or did three flights uh, in total about 20 minutes of flying and uh, then I'll run through the settings that I've got in iNav with you and just show you my basic setup. Any questions just um, give us a give us a buzz in the comments and I'll be happy to help you with any answers if I can. Hope you enjoy the flight guys. So I've got iNav 7 installed on the flight controller and it's not only a maiden for this plane, it's also a maiden for my Walk Snail Avatar Goggle X. So this is the first bit of a flight I've had with them on and I must say I'm quite happy so far with them. It looks beautiful. Running the iNav OSD font. So auto launch, I like to auto launch. And um, auto launch is perfect. Start off in angle mode, and then what we'll do, we'll um, once I get a bit of a feel for it, we'll throw it into acro mode and do a auto tune. So we just hit the auto level trim, just to get a trim happening here. We'll um, leave that on just for a few moments while we set up a few passes in a straight line. And once I'm happy with that, then we'll go on to an auto-tune and just get a basic auto-tune done. So I'm running the 2S battery that I've got. It's a lithium-ion battery, 3,500 milliamp battery. It wasn't at 100% charge when I first uh, launched the plane. I've uh, been testing with it, that's why it's low at the moment. Very happy with the flight of this craft at this stage, it's flying quite well. There's a few little bumps of wind there around here. Um, I'm not going to be flying this plane at all in uh, windy conditions, it's not designed for that. It's a calm wind plane. And like I said, I only built it just so I can take it on trips with me and have a bit of fun flying FPV with my Avatar Goggle X. 
So I'm pretty happy with the auto level here, it's gliding quite well. Cruising along at around 40 to 50 kilometres an hour. You don't want to go much over 50 in this plane from what I've been told. It flies at its best at around 40 to 45. It's more of a glider, it's not a sports acrobatic plane or anything like that. And we're only running 2.4 amps so it's pretty economical. So acro mode and we'll start doing a bit of an auto tune now and just I'm not going to go crazy with this because I don't need to be doing any loops or any anything wild so it may not change a great deal. It's flying pretty good just on the on the stock iNav settings here. We'll do a few We'll do a few uh, basic rough turns left and right and a few hard pitches up and down. But I really don't expect it to change too much. I will do all the modes as well, we'll go through all that and make sure everything works, especially return to home and loiter. So far the roll on the pitch PI, PIF has not changed at all. got it a little bit more. Need to be a bit harder on the, the pitch up and down and the rolls left and right I guess but like I said I'm not it's not designed to be flown this way so it doesn't really need much tuning this plane. We've had so much rain over the past few months uh, the ground below is very muddy there's a lot of water as well so very difficult to sort of find a spot that's clean and easy to access to get some flying done over the past few months. All right, we're throwing in a loiter. Let's check the loiter out. I've got it set to 60 meters, which is default. I might decrease that maybe to 50. And in loiter, it's, it's pulling 2.6. Now that's a fail safe, so this is a fail safe so I was talking about earlier in the video. We hit a fail safe there where we lost range for some reason all of a sudden. Um, I'm unsure why. But I know this area does have the odd dead spot for some reason because I had a DJI Mavic Pro also do a similar thing in, a, in the same sort of area so it could be something to do with that. But either way, we, we just prove the fail safe works because I'm back in control again. I like the way it's flying, it's flying quite nicely at the moment, cruising around 40 kilometres an hour. During a uh, current of 2.4 amps and 1 and 18 watts. So what we will do now, we'll bring it around for one more pass and then land it so I can save my auto tune settings and auto level. Quite hard to slow this plane down. Yeah, very hard. Bit of a hard landing, but we're down. 
So now the uh, auto tune and auto trim is done and it's all been saved. We'll launch again. Really launches nice. That's perfect. Really well done. So very minimal throttle I've used to, to get it out, off out of the way. It's just all set to default at the moment from the iNav default settings. I haven't altered anything. And like I said, after this flight, I'll, I'll run you through my settings through iNav and what, how it's set up. Two point four amps, two point five amps seems to be pretty much average. It seems if with this setup at the moment. Altitude hold. Let's see how that runs. So we're holding at twenty three meters in altitude at thirty five kilometers an hour. Seems to be holding pretty well. Not dropping much with its altitude. Yeah, lovely. So Speedy BF405 Wing Mini is proving to be quite a good flight controller. Let's throw it into cruise mode now and see how she cruises along. Cruising along at half throttle. Altitude should remain fairly steady as should the speed. I'm just adjusting it myself now just to bring it up a little bit. You notice in these modes that the uh, change in altitude when you want to do it is a lot less. You have to alter that if you want more. So coming back, return to home has been activated. And it climbed up to 50 metres, that's what it was set to. Instead of coming back at 30, it's climbed up to 50 to come back and now it will circle above me here. Now I've taken over back in angle mode. Everything seems to be running really well. So at this stage I've only used 10% of this battery because I only started at about 66%. So now we're doing one, one last auto tune to see if we get any more changes here. And there's not a great deal of change, so the, 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 the stock settings are quite good. I don't even know if the roll's even moved from the stock default settings. I don't think it has. The pitch did move a little bit with the feed forward. As with the cam, as with the goggles, um, I'm quite impressed. They're not, nothing's fogging up on me. Nothing's overheating. There's quite a few people not too happy with the Goggle X. Um, I can't say I've got any issues here at the moment. I have got the upgraded heat sink on it, but um, everything's clean. Everything's clear and comfortable. It fits my face quite well. Certainly happy with the way it's flying. It's it, there are a few gusts of, of wind we, that come and by here and there, but it's flying quite smoothly. What I might do is the uh, I might try and use the zoom function in the goggles to get rid of the corners of the foam you can see in the display and have that zoom in just a little bit.
good signal on the goggles nothing's breaking up everything's really well I haven't tested a huge amount of distance on it I know that but um, it's pretty good for what I've got here I do plan to do some upgrades to my aerials on some of my other planes using the, the uh, walk snail avatar system and we will do a test eventually too on the range maybe one day somehow it's a bit hard to do that sort of thing now um, with the legalities of stuff but I'm pretty happy with the stock setup of this really the stock aerials are doing what I need to do in the park to fly this drift the way it is here there's no break up everything's going good I'm gonna look at bringing it in soon the hardest part with this plane is killing speed and lowering its altitude it's a pretty tough one yeah I was just trying to do some soaring I was wondering how that works I, I've never soared anything before so I haven't had a glider so this these are supposed to go okay with a bit of gliding I don't know what the the readout is on the right hand side there actually means yet so I don't know if I'll keep it or not so coming in now we're gonna start we're gonna bring it in try and slow it up bring it in and um, hopefully not land it in water because there's quite a bit of mud and water around this whole area here Okay, so it's trying to lose the altitude that's quite tricky the wind slightest wind likes to try and give it lift and trying to do a combination of bringing it down and losing speed is something that's quite testing what I'm finding here The sort of plane is light enough you could probably catch it in, in, in air if you're good enough. Alright, we'll bring it around for one last one last pass. Hopefully we can keep it low and brush off as much speed as we can before we before we get to our final landing spot. Fifty kilometers an hour is too fast. It's very hard to slow down and get lower at the same time. So to go around again. The problem here, the the wind's circulating, so there isn't one real direction the wind's coming from, which makes it a bit tricky. Maybe this time we're low enough. It's got to keep the speed slow and the altitude low and we'll be right doesn't take much for it to speed up though all right here we go not easy <laughs> but we're down with a broken shoe so there's some of the stats if anyone wants to read that just pause it so that's its maiden it was a successful maiden um, even if it was overweight um, flies quite well on 2s I'll go into iNav and we'll show you the setup that I've got here I'm not gonna say too much I might just put a bit of music on and you can just pause it where you want to but I'll go through each tab and you can see exactly how this uh, drift is set up but yeah thanks for watching guys I hope this series has been of help for anyone who's trying to work out iNav or the drift anyone that would like a bit of help just try and message me if you can in the comments and I'll do my best to help you out or put you in the right direction but thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next one keep flying and bye for now